Hi, this is Dennis. I thought I might show you my little uh, DC motor testing rig which I made up. Uh, basically this is a indoor uh, split system head which I've removed the permanent magnet motor out of and the electrical cradle and I've interrupted the motor with a, uh, a box here which I can uh, interface the motor uh, supply connections and uh, allow it to uh, be connected to uh, four meters at once so that you can see in real time what goes on uh, when this motor is operating and also take some of the myths away from uh, you know service testing now the only problem that people generally complain about when they test motors is that obviously access is an issue and we do know that uh, if uh, you do service related tests where you've got to check at uh, harnesses and pins especially where you've got such very tiny connections it becomes quite difficult especially when you've got to uh, be one actually at the PCB and two, making sure you've got the right type of probe that you can test it with. So I'll grant you that can be a bit of an issue. However, if you know what you're looking for, it tends to make things a little bit easier for you. Now, just to show you what I've got here, I've got my little box, which has uh, basically interrupting the supply feed uh, from the uh, PCB to the motor uh, and uh, allowing us to take readings at certain locations, which I've uh, put onto these multimeters uh, with some labels so we can keep track of it. Uh, and I've also got a position uh, rotor lock switch. Now, if I turn that off, I actually cut the feedback signal from the rotor position uh, feedback sensor and uh, the board will then assume that the rotor is uh, faulty or uh, seized. So I thought I'd demonstrate that for you as well. Now, before you begin, I'd like to show you some very interesting information with regard to what's actually sent out to the motor. The motor itself has basically... Um, four active um, uh, controlling points. Now the first one is the VCC, which you can think of as a supply or a control voltage. And this basically allows the motor to function internally with its own little uh, micro circuitry inside. Now without this, this signal, and in this case we're looking for around 15 odd volts, without this, uh, nothing runs. It won't matter if the motor was brand new out the box. If the PCB does not generate this out to the motor, it does not work. The second one is a command voltage, and this is actually what sets the, um, the motor speed. It will increase to, to give it a speed increase. So it works somewhere anywhere between 1 and 5 or 1 and 6 volts DC. And the voltage will increase to provide a signal to the motor to increase speed, and then it will decrease to allow it to decrease speed. The high DC is what you can consider to be the power supply, which is coming off a rectifier from the indoor PCB. So there is a mini uh, rectifier on the board to convert this. Now it says about 342 volts, but I will tell you that this is not a true RMS meter, even though it's a nice fluke. So I'm not 100% sure that that is going to be right. I'll just uh, say for the time being that on average, 270 to 300 is what we normally see. The position signal, uh, this is actually a Hall effect sensor within the motor itself. Now, when the motor rotor turns, it uh, passes through Hall effect sensors, which will send a chop voltage back to the board to let it know that it's, uh, it's cycling. It also gives the uh, PCB uh, an idea of RPM so that it can uh, set speed references. And this is why they're, they're so accurate. So as our command voltage increases and the position signal sort of telling the board exactly how fast it's going, it sort of says, right, oh, that's where you want to be, I'll keep you there. But it's also there to provide the board information that it is actually turning, which I guess is essential too. Okay, now, before you begin, the most important test is that you don't have this unit turned on other than the power supply. And what we're really looking for is this. We want to make sure that we've got a, a control voltage being sent out. Now, if the board puts that out, the board's good. The command voltage here is, hasn't really begun yet. We're sitting on a residual point two of a volt, but that'll be just a, um, a residual voltage lying around. It hasn't actually operated yet, and we don't expect to see that um, until we turn it on. Here we can see that we've got our power, and here with our position, a test that you can do is that if you were to turn it very slowly, you will see that as the rotor turns around, and I'm just turning this around by hand, um, you'll see that it's chopping a signal back. Now, if you do it too quickly, it, it's very hard to see. It's not easy on meters, but you will actually see it. So what you're actually seeing is usually a, a 15 volt chop signal coming back. When it's actually running, this will be going so fast that uh, it'll almost become one singular voltage. But this is the test that you would do yourself to prove that the position signal is working in the motor. Okay? And again, that's not going to work unless we've got our control voltage coming in into the unit itself. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, turn the motor on, 
okay and I've got it on a low speed at the moment so I'll just turn it on and uh, what we should see shortly is uh, we'll see now that we've got a command voltage of about 2.6 volts and uh, this uh, this voltage is what uh, the PCB is sending out to allow the the motor to uh, to run uh, if we look back here we still got a stable control voltage our high DC has remained unchanged and even though we're seeing a 7 odd volt signal here that's not something we can rely on at the moment because it's going too fast for this meter to actually um, get a reading from now I know it's reading about 7 odd volts but it could be a lot higher than that too of course I can't be 100% sure of that at this time without you know um, a little bit more information but what's important is that we are getting this now if you're testing a board and you've got a faulty fan motor initially you should see this come up and if you see this come up that's great because the uh, PCB is putting out the required signal for the motor to run so really it's this one the control the command and the high voltage really which tell us that the PCB is uh, working okay now if I increase the fan speed which I'll just uh, get the remote and I'll I'll set the speed you'll watch what happens to the command I'll get it to uh, increase so we go up another speed and you'll see that it's now increased I go up to about what I guess medium speed it's gone up again okay and then we bring it up to high speed and you can see it's it's gone up uh, nothing here has changed nothing here has changed the rotor is still staying at this particular voltage so everything's quite happy now I'm, I'm going to cause a position fail by shutting off this switch and this switch will disconnect the uh, position feedback sensor from the motor if we have a look back here you'll see it's locked up on about 13 odd volts that's uh, coming back from the motor itself but it's being prevented from getting back to the PCB because I have disabled it from this point here now the PCB will won't always shut the motor down immediately it will actually continue to run on now it's probably very hard uh, for you to see that motor running but it's actually just stopped now in some cases it may give it another go to try and restart and uh, if it still doesn't see the signal back it will end up uh, bringing a fault on the PCB itself and that uh, that could take a minute or two it really just depends you'll see it's uh, trying to restart the motor now and that's what I like about this quality gear it always gives it a second go to make sure things are okay it never just assumes it's a problem on the first go and when it fails to see the signal it will send okay you'll shut it down now remember with service testing you should always check with the manufacturer's brand and their required service testing information and uh, what they recommend is best practice um, this will shut down in a minute and it has and if we have a look over here you'll see that we now have an active fault which if I use an alphanumeric uh, diagnostic code it'll certainly tell me that there's a fan position lock now when you uh, test this out for yourself on site this is the way that you would normally go about it you'd have to establish that you've got before anything's done the control voltage that you're getting out a command voltage and that you've also got a high DC signal now when the motor is not connected to the uh, indoor PCB or if you've got a DC on the outdoor and it's not connected this should always be there you should always be getting a control signal the command you might see briefly uh, you'd have to test between the right locations but the command you would see very briefly and before it saw no motor connected it would actually um, show you something so if you're seeing some voltage rise initially from the start you know that the board's putting out the signal and if we see a high voltage also and uh, you'll probably notice that voltage may be discharging along the way uh, when the thing's shut off it may be coming down from a few hundred volts you will certainly know that you've got what you need from the rectifier of the board and those things can be done quite quite simply and quickly as long as they can be done safely as far as the position detect sensor goes all you really have to do there again is that is the only requirement for the motor to be plugged into the board because when you plug it into the board and turn it on you need to have a feedback okay and the only way you're going to see it is if you basically hook on to the harness itself and if you see it basically you will see that being fed back from the motor when you turn it very very slowly so this is the only test that you need to do with the motor inside now we do know sometimes that uh, there can be uh, catastrophic problems when we have serious uh, power malfunctions within a motor itself in some cases if we have uh, emergence of the high DC to the low voltage systems inside this motor it can be rather catastrophic usually destroying the motor and or the indoor PCB itself when you do any sort of testing and you suspect the motor it should always be established that you have the control 
command and high DC available before you do any plugging in with motors. Now, plugging in and out with motors, especially DC ones, live is extremely dangerous, so you don't do that. But not only that, you also risk it uh, backfusing the PCB and the motor simultaneously. Motors can be destroyed, especially these DC ones, if you plug them in or plug, turn, plug them out live. I certainly don't recommend doing that, nor do I recommend doing any sort of live work whatsoever. Um, but I would certainly recommend that uh, people might want to go to their suppliers, and when you have your uh, training sessions, just get them to go through some of the testing procedures, and a lot of them may actually involve um, resistance tests too, because there are some resistance tests that are available on motors. Now, the majority of splits may have this arrangement, so you'll find that there might be some similarity between a lot of different types, a lot of different models out there. Um, indoor and outdoor much the same. You might find that access on some of them is a lot better than others. But also remember that this type of design of motor is not always used. Uh, some DC motors have got their own inverter system basically built onto the outdoor PCB and they simply uh, switch back a feed signal. That's all they do. They get a power supply and a switch feed signal and the full motor speed control is done on the PCB itself. So there are some variations to that. However, I hope this has given you a bit of a snapshot into uh, the sort of world of uh, split system air conditionings. Um, these motors are very, very uh, um, good to, to use in uh, splits because they produce low motor heat. They use very, very low current. And because they're a synchronous speed motor, meaning they are in um, synchronization with their field, they have very, very uh, high efficiency for their torque. So they're a very, very good motor. And, you know, we shouldn't be too worried about the sort of service testing that we are going to be presented with because it's not really that hard when you've got some idea what you need to do. All right, I'll uh, hope you've enjoyed the, the little video here and I'll see you all next time.